Okay, hi. It's Rika Kovasen here tonight recreating a winter card. Let me just check from the computer that I can see the feed from there. And if you're joining in, please let me know if you are seeing and hearing okay. yet but probably soonish it will pop up here okay then there we go at least i can see myself so hopefully somebody else can also and well today we are recreating or i am re recreating and if you have the materials ready, then you can craft alongside this or something totally different. But this kind of winter card, there's both white gesso and black gesso used, some blue mediums, impasto paint, and then liquid acrylic. And for the snow, well, gesso, but also unicorn paste to give that lovely shine and twinkle. Hopefully you can see it in the camera now. Oh. Because of the delay, I need to do this. Hey, Sato! Hey Pia. Koska muutama suomenkielinen on paikalla, eli siis tuttuun tapaan kysymyksiä voi laittaa suomeksi. Myöskin pääosin hölpötän tällä kertaa englantia, mutta niin kummalla kielellä vaan voi kysyä. Hey Teija. Hi Erika. Thank you. Just said that if there is any things watching, they can ask questions also in Finnish. Hey, Johanna. Thank you for joining. <laughs> so it's one minute. Hi, Diane. And then we'll start. If you have any questions along the way, just type them in. I have the screen here by my side, so I'll try to keep a look of the chat. If I miss anything, I'll go through the comments afterwards. One minute still. I always start a little bit too early <laughs> because I can't think of like babbling that much. But if you have any questions about the mediums or whatever, just type that in and let's see what I can do. I wanted to make a winter card rather than a Christmas card because not everybody celebrates Christmas. So even if you're, you can turn this into a Christmas card or then just a winter wishes or holiday wishes. Okay, now it's the right time. So let's get started. I start this card like I do quite a few of my projects nowadays using just white plain cardstock. I usually buy a bulk of these like I'm not sure what the word in English is it's called Riesi in Finnish like a pack of papers so there's plenty to go around these are 160 grams Fabriano paper so it's a little bit on the thinner side for card making, but it will do. I originally bought those for jelly printing, so there I want uh, something a little bit lighter. Ream. Ream of per uh, paper. Thank you, Erika. So this is A4, which is an European size, but you can then uh, tweak the measurements for American sizes. 
So I'm cutting 21 centimeter piece of it. And as A4 is 21 centimeters like this, so I have a rectangular a square, that's the word. This is rectangular, that's square. And then this one can be used as the little decorative piece. But as you can see, I want a little bit bigger for this card. So luckily I have the other sheet here. And then I cut about 10 centimeters. And then half a centimeter away from this side. So then it will be almost the same size as my, as my front cover. What I still need to do is to make a crease for the card. So I'm swapping to the, um, what is this, crease plate. Couple of times so now I have my guard base done. Pretty simple. Naturally you can use your ready card bases as well. You don't have to do your own but this is kind of usually I use the kind of leftover piece so I get one one card with the focal area from one sheet. Good morning Anita. It's past 8 here in Finland p.m. that is evening but I know in the uh, east western coast of USA for example it's early morning. Now I'm adding double-sided tape to the other side already kind of so that they are in place probably I won't be able to add this one to the card during the live because it will be so soaked with mediums this part when I'm doing the snow but let's see at least I have the tapes ready should I get this chance to go there now I'm removing this card base to security because I'm opening the black gesso jar and I want the card base to be white and not have splashes or something. Then let's see if the brayer craft gods or elves are on my side. So I will get this effect this time as well. I should. But you never know. Something might happen. So let's take a sheet of paper. Then let's take the black gesso. Naturally, if you don't have black gesso, you could use black acrylic paint as well. Or then dark blue. Any color you want for the sky. Then let's add the sky. Let me try to get so you can see. So I want a more intense, like a solid coat to the top, as you can see here. And then this kind of gradient to the other side. So now that I added a little bit more gesso and I'm kind of loading my brayer with it, I'm planning to go just the top to have that gradient look here still. like so. Doesn't look like much just yet, but it's the first layer. Let me dry this really quickly. Hello, hello, if you 
your joining just in. This is the first step done. Doesn't look like a winter <laughs> nightscape just yet, but getting there. And then I wanted kind of a galaxy feel. It didn't quite work the way I wanted to, but I still like this kind of hmm, varying blue effect I have on the sky. And for that, hello Joanna. Hello Linda. For that, I'm applying two acrylic paints to a piece of plastic. The other one is impasto and other one is liquid acrylic. This one is cobalt and this one is Prussian blue. And then all things to safety for just a moment. This is just water. Naturally. If you are not as adventurous, let's say, if you don't like the possibility of the project going wrong or not ending off the way you want, then by all means you can use a brush at this stage. I, on the other hand, find it really fun not being able to control the mediums totally but it's more like it is what it is <laughs> because then if I would do it by brush like this it would be maybe a little bit more boring look than if I use just a piece of plastic and see what I get. It's kind of a marbled effect. So not sure if the camera is picking it up. I'm cleaning on the same time. But there's these places where there's more of that vibrant cobalt blue and then there's more of the kind of greenish blue in places. And then, of course, there's my fingerprint. So, should this card go astray or something, I can prove it's mine because there's my <laughs> fingerprint on it. Um, there's just a teeny tiny bit of white still showing there, so I'm adding another layer. But this time I'm also adding a touch of white gesso. here but I will wash my wash my brush so I don't get glue to the jar let's see if I get a Milky Way style thing no I got blobs but luckily they are in a pool of blue, so I can just use a brush. There we go. Now that it's still wet. Hi, Aga! So happy to see you here. Then some white splashes. I'm going to add white splashes in a later stage as well, when the base is dry. Then they are going to be more like um, snowflakes. Now these hazy ones, that you can see from, let me try if I can show you here. The hazy ones are either like snowflakes from far away or then these could be stars and then 
the ones coming on top are the snowflakes or then Milky Way. I'm sorry about the noise, I'm drying again. So now turning my attention to the snow, maybe that's dry enough for now. And I'm not worried about these because I'm adding something to the snow. So even if there's some blue there, it will be fine. What I'm building the snow of is a piece of lace. Hi Cindy! If you're just joining in, I've done the sky part of the card or somewhat sky part because there's still a couple of things coming on there and now I'm turning to snow. So I have a piece of lace and then I have some cheesecloth or gauze. I'm not sure if there's a difference between those two. Maybe cheesecloth is a little bit thicker. Just don't know the word, word so. But this will make snowy texture to my card. I could use a craft glue to adhere those, but I don't have to because I'm using white gesso to kind of color everything, so I can use that as my adhesive as well. I'm adding a layer of gesso there. Because this Finnabar gesso is acrylic based, so anything that's lightweight, it will hold. So let's put this as the kind of bottom layer. Maybe I'll switch to brush so I don't. Uh, lose all the texture by adding a heavy coat on top, but rather use a brush so you can still see that this is lace that is underneath there. Just a good layer, turning everything white. I would suggest using kind of white-ish lace anyway. This, the one I'm using, it's kind of really light beige or like milky colored version. So it's okay, but if you use a red lace, for example, then you really, really need to go heavy with the gesso on top so it doesn't look like there's, well, pink snow could be nice, but red snow, perhaps not, that's not that nice or friendly looking. 
So now I'm adding the gauze or cheesecloth and I'm using it to hide those blue blobs I had there and they will be gone. There's going to be stuff on top. I cut a piece of the cheesecloth and then kind of wrap it so it's not showing the cut edge anymore but it's more like a fluffy thread thing. I'm not good with words today, <laughs> sorry about that. But more like you can't see the edge but it's more like just texture than you can definitely tell that hey there's a piece of cheesecloth there. For the background kind of nearer to the place where snow changes to sky I'm building a little bit flatter layers kind of trying to mimic the perspective. Okay, sorry about that. Now we are off focus. Let me see if this helps. And then, yeah, better. So I'm building like uh, flatter layers there and then adding a little bit more dimension to the front. And I'm not adhering the whole thing totally with the gesso. I'm leaving it a little bit fluffy for kind of two reasons. One is that I can then tuck the legs of my deer underneath the layer. So it looks like it's standing on the snow, but also to give it dimension, to give that kind of fluffy snowy feel. Hey hey Mari. Thank you all for joining. Kiitos kaikki kun olette katsomassa. If you have any questions just let me know. And well, one thing. I did it kind of naturally but it's almost like the rule of thirds. So there's two thirds of the sky and one third of the snow. Naturally, you can do it otherwise, like put more snow. But for me, it's about the night scenery. Hey, bye, hey, baby. So there is more like room for the stars and snow and the moon than to the snow. But you can alter it the way you want. Now a tough decision. Which one of uh, these deers do you want me to use? The doe, is it called doe? Or the, I have no idea, deer? Deer with antlers? Just write to the chat which one you want. Mitäpä mietit Sirpa? While I'll wait which one you want me to add, I'll add a little trees. Bok? Okay. Thank you, Anita. Again. New words. The trees I'm kind of just dabbing my brush. It doesn't the buck. There's two for the buck. No, no does. I do hope that it's actually called the doe. But yeah, these trees don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be Bob Ross. Or actually, you can be Bob Ross and make happy little trees. Or is that, <laughs> that's what he says. But just kind of dabbing 
these little line-like things that then turn into trees. Snowy, snow-covered trees. Don't need a fawn. Okay, I don't have a fawn, unfortunately. These are both done using a Sizzix die. And this one is Christmas elements, actually. I cop them two times, yeah, only two times to make them a little bit sturdier. But naturally you could do them even thicker. I couldn't use chipboard because those are the thin dies. So they won't cut chipboard. But yeah, you wanted this one. And well, it, it is really visual with the antlers. Now I need this one. So I'm using foam tape to a little bit raise him from the background. And as I'm adding him on top of not dry, just so this is really wet gesso. Then I'm adding some glue to the foam dot because the dry adhesive can't adhere to something that wet. So there we go. And all these that are now kind of going over the card, I don't mind at this stage because then when I'm adding this to the actual card base, I can just trim them, but probably need to wait a couple of hours or overnight because they need to be sturdy. Because if I would now try to cut, the gesso is still wet, so everything will start moving and then probably the <laughs> stag, oh, what was the word? Hey, Karita! Will also start moving. So better just to wait. If you're making these for a lot of friends, let's say, then you can do a bigger sheet. Again, not just the teeny tiny individual pieces, but dedicate one sheet and make the whole landscape at once and then cut it into pieces later. Eipä hei kareita, jos on jotain kysyttävää, niin ei muuta kuin kirjoittele vaan. So we have done sky with black gesso, snow with white gesso, but snow of course needs some bling. One of my favorite ways to do snow is actually Finnovar's paper paste because of the texture. But another favorite is unicorn paste because this is so shiny and glittery and like snowy icy crystals. Come on. I'll put that there because that can be used. And a little skin. So if you look at the unicorn paste there's a bunch of stuff in here. Let me a little bit mix it up. So there's these bigger mica flakes. And then there's also glitter. So if you don't mix it, because the heavier items of course go to the bottom if you're not using it daily, then probably just the gel will be on top, so you need to kind of scoop it up to get all the yummy stuff from the bottom. The gel looks, as you can see, totally different now than it will be when it's dry. The gel base will be a teeny tiny tad yellowish and also glossy and compared to gesso, for example. 
I'm using a palette knife and just adding it here and there, kind of making little snow drifts of the paste. And kind of scooping so I get the bigger chunks, the bigger mica flakes also. Um, then the wild gel unicorn paste is still wet. Let's add some more texture, frozen crystals. So these are just glass beads. Okay, we are off focus again. Let me see if this trick helps. Okay, the thing is so. So, yeah, perfect. I'm guessing it helped. So these are glass beads, the crystal color. So just white on white. And while the paste is still wet, I can just sp sprinkle these on and they will then adhere to the paste. If I want, I can slightly tap so they will be immersed in the gel, but actually gravity will do its trick as well. If you're hitting, hitting the gel with the bead, it will stay put. Like so. Almost done. This is actually quite a fast, fast forward card. Now we need this area to be dry. And I'm thinking it's a little bit wet still. So let me grab the heat tool. Now is the perfect time to ask questions if you have any. feels that it's dry, at least it's hot. So we are doing, let me put this one on the side, the moon. Normally I would go with uh, silver, silver moon, but this time I wanted a little bit warmer tone. Silver seems to be a bit too Cold for this card. I'm not sure if it's the Prussian blue kind of keeping the tone a little bit warmer on the sky. So I chose to go with white gold instead of the, the silver one. So I'm using an older Finnabar stencil and then just use my finger to apply the wax. So there's the moon. And as you can see here, I am put a little bit around. Okay, now we are off focus again. I'm sorry about this. Let me do this trick again. Perfect. Now please stay focused. Then I have some of the wax on my finger and I lightly go over. So it's kind of giving a little halo for the moon. But with this you need to really have a gentle touch because otherwise you are then kind of dimming the lines that are in there. So, two things left, first the snowflakes and then the sentiment. Great tip on the halo, thank you. I also saw some French comments, but unfortunately 
it's been so many years since I took French lessons that <laughs> I can't answer in French. Uh, merci. C'est joli. <laughs> but it's really poor, so I need to get back on those a little bit later so I can use <laughs> Google Translate. So, for these snowflakes, it's the common pack of practice of just white gesso splashes. The other option, if you want to have a little bit kind of raised splashes or I think they keep their color a little bit better as well, is to mix craft glue, gesso and then water. Still needs to be fluid enough for it to leave the brush. Okay, now there's some kind of uh, falling star, shooting star, that's the word. Here we go. Then I don't take the heat gun just yet because I need to think about the wording and that usually takes some time so they can dry, air dry a while looking through these. <laughs> well, actually, enjoy the beauty. It continues of becoming, but we can cut that part out. If I find my scissors, there it is. In the beginning I said that I wanted to make a winter card rather than a Christmas card because not everybody uh, uh, celebrates Christmas. But on the other hand, not everybody has a white Christmas or white winter at the same time. For example, here in the southern Finland, that's kind of uncommon these days that we have snow. Okay, now I'm torn between this side or this side. In that card I have it on this side, but somehow in this card I'm failing to put them on this side. Let's hope these will adhere because I didn't dry. The splashes. Luckily, it's not the layer, it's just the teeny tiny dots. So, like that. Now that I have the double sided tape strips underneath, it would be possible <laughs> to actually adhere this to the card base but then I couldn't trim these and the gel for example is still really wet. You can use a heat tool to dry the gel but be careful because again it's an acrylic based product so it will boil so then it will resemble a crocodile skin or something like that so that's not the best way to get the snowy glistening effect. The best is just to let it air dry. So I'm not mounting it on top of a card base just yet, but a, l a little bit later. As you can see, this is a little bit warped, the paper. Well, so is the, actually this one, but it, this one is because it's been in a bag for, for this live. But if you want to straighten it, just put it underneath a book, for example, after 
the gel is dried, of course, and you will get a relatively straight surface. Or also another tip, if you want to avoid the buckling, then use a sturdier paper or even a chipboard. So we are done for the tape today. I already have my December live project done. Something totally different <laughs> than this one, but I'll, I'll, I'm not sharing it just yet. You'll have to wait some weeks to see what I'm then making. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, I'll keep an eye on the chat and also read through the comments after the live. But thank you so much. Kiitoksia. So I hope you learned something new or got a little tip. But yeah. And tomorrow it's the first advent. For those of you that celebrate Christmas, I'm wishing you a very nice first advent or then just a happy Sunday. <laughs> Kiitoksia, kun olitte katsomassa. Jos on jotain kysymyksiä, niin ei muuta kuin vaan laittamaan kommenttia chattiin tai sitten vaikka pistämään ihan viestiä Messengerissä tai jossain. Ja oikein hyvää ensimmäistä adventtia huomiselle tai sitten sunnuntaita vaan, jos, jos ei joulua vietetä. So, thank you. I'll be seeing you next month. Bye!